Hey everyone, I want to do a quick video today on a very important concept that is not well understood. In fact, through one simple visual, I will show you why the 4% rule is completely irrelevant to most people's financial situations. Now, to set the stage here, the 4% rule comes from a study by Bill Bangan, where he asked what historical rate someone could have taken from a portfolio while giving themselves inflation adjustments along the way and made it through even the worst periods in history without depleting their portfolio. This is a perfectly reasonable academic exercise, and as a professor, it's a question that I find interesting. Bangan's analysis found that historically, that rate you could have taken from a balanced portfolio was an initial withdrawal rate of 4%. And that's where we got this concept of a safe withdrawal rate of 4% that gets thrown around so much today. So why is this not useful information in the real world? Let me show you. Retirement distribution hatchet to refer to the typical shape of distributions more realistically taken from portfolios in retirement. Now this chart is adjusting for inflation, so it's showing what we would refer to as real spending or inflation adjusted spending. The 4% rule also provides inflation adjustments. So here's a quick look at what an inflation adjusted distribution pattern would look like for someone who's following a 4% rule. The big factor driving the hatchet shape that is more commonly observed is that someone's need to draw from their retirement portfolio is not equal across retirement. Delaying social security until age 70 is often a very good thing to do unless someone has health concerns that would significantly reduce their life expectancy. But let's say you retire at 60 or 65 and delay social security until age 70. That means you'll often need to draw more heavily from your portfolio in early years, but once social security kicks in, you can often reduce your distribution rate quite significantly. This change in real distribution rates over time has very important implications for how much someone can safely take from their portfolio. A secondary factor influencing the shape of the hatchet you see here is what's known as the retirement spending smile, a term coined by David Blanchett that refers to how typical retiree spending actually decreases in inflation-adjusted terms over time. This forms a sort of arc in the handle of the hatchet, but this is ultimately not as consequential as the blade of the hatchet that often comes from needing greater distributions from a portfolio in the earlier years of retirement while retirees may be waiting for social security, pensions, or other income sources to start. And notably, while I'm trying to keep this simple and focus on the 4% rule, the same retirement distribution hatchet presents major issues relying on some of the more advanced retirement income distribution strategies, such as Guyton Clinger's guard rips. In fact, while I'm a professor and I personally do some retirement income planning research and certainly see the academic value in these simplified models that researchers use, the reality is that the retirement distribution hatchet actually undermines the real world usefulness of almost all retirement income research. So what's the solution? What should people do? Well, I don't wanna get into the weeds here in this video, but at a very high level, what's ideal to do instead is to build out a plan that captures the true shape of an individual's anticipated spending in retirement. Once we have that unique spending profile for a household, which will capture dynamics like how old they were when they retired, how much they wanted to spend, how much they'll receive in social security, pension, other income, as well as when those income streams will turn on, then we can solve for how much someone with that unique profile could start out spending with a reasonable risk level of not running out of money in retirement. How we carry out that analysis could use various underlying methodologies like historical simulation, Monte Carlo analysis, or regime-based Monte Carlo, but those are more technical details. And the most important part here is that we want to carry out the risk analysis on a spending profile that fits a given household situation. And finally, we also want to plan to adapt. This is another major concern with the 4% rule. Under the 4% rule, someone would just start spending at this level and charge forward blindly no matter what happens. But in reality, there will be time periods in retirement when things have gone well, and perhaps we can increase spending, as well as time periods when things have gone poorly, and perhaps we need to cut back spending. Overall, this willingness to adjust allows us to take a bit more than we otherwise could from a portfolio, while also ensuring that we don't foolishly let risk rise too high in retirement or wind up accumulating more wealth than we intended and miss out on opportunities to use funds in meaningful ways that allow us to spend time with our friends and family or contribute to the people and organizations that we care about. The framework we can use to figure out how to adjust our spending in retirement is something Justin Fitzpatrick and myself called Total Risk Guardrails which we also cover in the article I mentioned previously, 
So if you want to dive into it further, I'll leave a link below this video. And when it comes to actually implementing this in practice, that's where tools like Income Lab, where Justin works, I'm on the advisory board, we're trying to build out technology that actually helps simplify and streamline this type of analysis because it can get fairly complex. And as I said, I want to keep this video short and high level, but I hope this video provides some context for understanding why the 4% rule does not apply in real life. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have a question you'd like me to answer, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks, everyone.